People often ask me what data scientists actually do, and what that means to us here is that we sort of blend uh, the mathematical skill, the programming and infrastructure skill, and what I usually call the hacking skill, that is the ability to get things done. Um, and so we are responsible for taking the flow of data that comes through Bitly and building interesting things on top of it. Some of those interesting things feed directly into our products, so you'll see uh, our analytics, we've built a search engine, which is itself a piece of infrastructure in a product. Um, and some of those things might wind up in an academic paper. We've built a lot of this stuff ourselves uh, for a bunch of reasons. Um, primarily because there are quirks to our data that allow us to make assumptions about how it will behave, that allow us to make optimizations to those systems. Um, all of the pieces of our infrastructure follow very old patterns. So they're usually a stream of data comes into a queue where items pile up and then we have key readers that pull off that queue, do some analysis, uh, and perhaps put it in a database or into another stream or something else like that. Uh, so the patterns are things that have been well understood in computer science since the 70s, uh, but the actual implementation is something that's custom to our data just to make it as efficient as possible. The tool set is a good question. Um, we use Python. We love Python. Uh, we're, uh, everyone at Bitly loves Python. Uh, we use it across our infrastructure, across our data analysis, and that also means that everyone on the team, and we now have 25 engineers, uh, can read each other's code, which is great for collaboration. Uh, so within Python, we use NumPy, SciPy, uh, scikits.learn and a lot of the other really powerful numerical computing libraries that people have created for doing this kind of work in Python. Uh, that said, a lot of our real-time analysis infrastructure is in C, uh, just because it's close to the metal and it's fast and when you need it to be fast there's nothing better. Uh, in terms of data storage technologies, we use a little bit of everything. Um, our core URL store is still in MySQL. Uh, we're using HDFS for a lot of our offline analysis with Hadoop. We're using Redis extensively, uh, and in fact, we've built a sharding layer on Redis so we can have it running across multiple servers, which lets us keep a lot of data in memory, uh, which has been really useful. Uh, we also, on the visualization side, uh, pretty much use whatever is right for the job. At the moment, my team has fallen completely in love with d3.js which is a JavaScript visualization toolkit, but we've also used ggplot2 and R, and even Excel at times to make simple graphs. Thinking about the big challenges in the data science field in general um, are around uh, infrastructure for handling a lot of data, um, repeatable patterns for analyzing similar data. A lot of people are working on the very same kinds of data, either web data or biological data, uh, and we need to come up with um, patterns and expectations so that we can make that kind of analysis more of a commodity. Um, I think there are a few hard problems that everyone deals with. Some of them are things like filtering spam uh, out of your web service. Uh, things like being able to tell is an entity or a phrase the same as another entity or phrase, and that's things like uh, is a mention of international business machines the same as this mention of IBM. Uh, is it the same as IBM Research and all the other variations of it? Uh, that's something a lot of people deal with and there's no one solution. Uh, though the dirty secret is to crawl Wikipedia. Um, and then I think we're open for some really great uh, work on problems that really haven't been possible before now but should be possible in the next year. And so for that I think uh, people should look at rich media analysis, so being able to put in a photo and have it tell you, oh, there are two people in this photo and one can of Coke and a puppy. Um, we should be able to do that shortly. Uh, and then also to be able to um, you know, take uh, time series data and learn things from that in its relation to time and space, um, and also geographic data. I also think that we as a community are missing a good analysis framework that is between something like Excel and something like R or Python, uh, where non-sophisticated users who understand the problem they're trying to solve can sort of get their hands dirty uh, working with data, but data that won't fit in Excel or where Excel doesn't offer the statistical functions you need.